Hi, this is Angie Monko. I'm your energy healer and self-love coach for women going through grief, divorce, loss, and other difficult life transitions. And today I want to talk to you about how to compassionately speak to someone who's grieving and eight things not to say to someone who's grieving. So this list of things to say to the griever is quite small, which shouldn't be surprising because the fewer words that we can use, the better. We don't want to make assumptions. Um, in your heart, imagine like you're giving them a hug. So you might want to say, I'm so sorry for your, you know, my condolences for the loss of and save the person's name. Um, I can only imagine how you might feel. I'm here to support you. Tell me about your loved one. How are you doing today? And I'd really like to know, emphasis on today. So the energy of emotion can be felt. These are things not to say to the griever. And if you've said some of these things, I'm not trying to instill guilt. Just know that next time you can say something different. And if you feel like you've said something to someone in the past, feel free to go to them and just say, hey, you know what? When you lost so-and-so, I remember I made this comment. And if I hurt you in any way, I'm sorry. Because the thing is, when people are grieving, they're heightened in their pain and they will write you off in their mind. And so it's best to, you know, say something to them and uh, you'll never know if they've written you off. You just won't hear from them again. So the first thing that the phrase is, I know how you feel. And um, this is not appropriate because we don't know how they feel. Every single relationship is unique and different. And so um, instead you can say, I can only imagine what you may be feeling. Okay, number three is your loved one is in a better place. Um, saying this implies that we know what their spiritual beliefs are about the afterlife. And unless we know them intimately, and we know this, we shouldn't say it. Um, you know, it, it's comforting to us, we mean well, but we just shouldn't say it unless we know. Number three, I don't know how you're still standing. This can make the grieving person feel guilty for the fact that they shouldn't be standing, you know, or that they are still standing. And so um, any type of phrasing that applauds them for being strong can encourage them to be a martyr. Um, and this isn't helpful because it, it, it encourages them to um, hold everybody else up at their own expense, at their own sacrifice of not taking care of themselves. Um, so refrain from saying that one. Okay, number four, I'd kill myself. This dramatic despairing statement really is more about us than them. It'll not make them feel any better. And um, an example, you know, some people say that we'll never get over the death of a child, but we'll remain permanently heartbroken. And I think this does a disservice to helping people to heal their heart because like, James, John James says from the Grief Recovery Handbook, there's a common and false picture created by grievers and professionals in all literature. And here's what he quotes, because I haven't forgotten my loved one and I still sometimes have feelings about them that I'm not over the pain of the loss. This tragic setup is guaranteed to restrict and deflate the life of the griever because we identify with being permanently heartbroken. I think of Maddie every day and I do miss her but does that mean I'm not over the pain of the loss? Who's to say? Number five, you're so strong and brave. I heard this one a lot. And how can we really know that they're so strong and brave? Maybe it's just a front that they're putting up, again, to try to hold it all together. And it really kind of implies that, they're, that grief is burdensome, right? For the person who's witnessing the one grieving. Um, that we need to hold it in to keep others from feeling uncomfortable. Number six, I can't even imagine. This can be offensive to some grievers because they think, you know what, you could imagine if you tried. And so um, usually we just mean, well, it's beyond our own imagination of a nightmare. And so we do have good intentions, but again, we want to think about the griever and uh, you could say instead, I can only imagine. I can only imagine how you might be feeling because that would be more accurate. Number seven, thank goodness they're no longer in pain. Again, it sounds great, sounds compassionate, but it can have the effect of minimizing the grief that others are experiencing. 
I felt this one a lot with Maddie because she had a chronic debilitating illness. Um, and of course she was no longer suffering. I was glad of that, but it still hurt as much that she was gone. So we're a sensitive bunch when we're grieving. You could instead say, it had to be hard watching your loved one suffer and a relief on some level that they're no longer in pain. And yet you still deeply miss them. And number eight, at least they lived a long life. Again, this can minimize the experience of grief um, just because someone that they lost is older. Um, and so a more sensitive thing to say, I'm honored to witness how you shared your life together and built so many wonderful memories. It's a testimony of your love for each other. So I want to recommend this grief exercise that I learned from Tara Nash. She's a spiritual psychologist. And she says, you put your hands over your heart and you inhale the person you love. And you exhale fear and worry, pain and sadness. And then she read the words of Nikki Bannis from her book, Along the Way. No matter what mountain you're climbing or what valley you're navigating through, hold on to hope, my beautiful friends. Hold on to hope in the good times and the bad, on the days of sunny skies and the days of endless rain. Replace your fears with boundless, relentless courage. Drown out your doubts with an overflow of hope for all the good things are coming. Let hope light your path when all you can see is darkness. Let hope create joy out of the times when there seems to be none. Hope is feeling heavy raindrops crashing onto your skin, but still smiling about the incredible light that is coming after the storm. It is feeling the immense pain of heartbreak, but knowing that there is still boundless love in the world meant for you. It is knowing that today might hold everything you've been waiting for for so long. Hope is not just a little word to toss around lightly. No, hope is a powerful seed you plant in your heart, knowing without a doubt that in time it will bloom into a magnificent garden. Hope has the power to bring this bright sun of tomorrow into today. Always carry hope in your heart, my beautiful friends, because sometimes hope will be the very thing that carries you. Beautiful. And I highly recommend the, the Grief Recovery Handbook by John James and Russell Friedman. It's, it's just so wise. And lastly, I'm having a free event on November 1st coming up that is called Three Secrets to Survive Difficult Life Transitions. I'll put the link in the comments and I hope you will join me for that. Thank you so much.